In this video I want to compare Versal versus Netlify so you know which one suits you better for your next project. So the first question is what is it at all? Both Versal and Netlify are two most popular serverless platforms. They both are using Gemstack, which actually means JavaScript, Markup and API. The main idea is that most of the projects at the beginning that people were deploying were just front-end projects, which actually means they have a pre-built HTML, CSS, JavaScript and this is it. But it is still possible in both platforms to implement your backend and work with the database. And you can either call your commands from the console when you want to deploy or you can simply bind your git to both projects in order to deploy your project directly when you merge your changes to master. Now let's talk about popularity. And Versal is extremely popular because of Next.js and if you don't know Next.js is the most popular framework for React for server-side rendering, which actually means they wrote Next.js and they promoted Versal in every single article for deployment and obviously people used Versal as a great solution to deploy their projects to production, which actually means Versal can deploy Next.js projects with server-side rendering. And long time Versal was extremely focused on that. But actually nowadays Netlify can do exactly the same. So which one is more popular here? There are 470,000 websites which are built with Versal and 2% of these websites are in 10,000 most popular websites in the world. And some of these websites are Patreon, Gap or McDonald's for example. Netlify, on another hand, has even more websites, over 500,000, and 3% of 10,000 most popular websites in the world are built with Netlify. And here are several examples of these websites. It is Yelp, Firefox and Python. Now let's talk about pricing, and both free tiers on Versal and Netlify are extremely generous. You are getting quite a lot of stuff completely for free, and an average expenses of free tier website for both these projects are near $36, but you are getting this stuff for free. It is an extremely good idea. But as always, to understand what project to choose, you must read every single line in features that it has. For example, in both these projects you can see that you are getting 100 gigabytes of bandwidth per month. And it is exactly the same inside Netlify, but afterwards you must pay $55 for another 100 gigabytes, which is quite a lot. As you can see, the building time on Netlify is 300 minutes per month. What does build time mean? This is the time when your project builds. For example, the typical React project builds around one minute, which actually means you can redeploy your changes to Netlify 300 times per month. In comparison, on Versal you are getting 6000 minutes, which actually means here it was 300 minutes and here is 6000. This is extremely a lot of time for the building, so if you are planning to rebuild your website a lot of times, it might be that Versal suits you better. And now here is the most important difference. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. On the Versal it is forbidden on the free tier to implement any commercial usage, which actually means you can't throw AdSense on your blog, you can't sell something on your website and you can't build an e-commerce shop there. It is all forbidden on Versal, you must pay for the paid tier. But it is all free on Netlify. You can do all this stuff on a free tier, this is why it makes a lot of sense to take Netlify if you plan to run a business and sell something. At the beginning you can do it for free and you can scale it later. Now we must talk about serverless functions. If you want to write some code that will be executed inside these projects, then we are talking here about serverless functions. And as you can see here, we have special limitations. On Netlify, we are getting 125,000 executions per month, which actually means you can run your script this many times. On the Versal here, we are getting the information in hours, which actually means this is computation time and not execution time. 
Still, this is quite a lot for a small or medium project. Another important feature of Netlify, which we don't have inside Versal, is forms. Inside Netlify, we can build forms even on free tier without any additional payments, which actually means you can implement some forms that you can send to your users to get some feedback, and it can be integrated with different services. We don't have something like that inside Versal, but you can use different third-party providers to implement forms. The same goes with authentication. On Netlify we are getting it out of the box and 1000 users are for free there, but we don't have such functionality inside Versal, only through third-party providers. Another important point that inside Versal we are getting analytics out of the box even inside free tier. And here we will get access to 2500 events in our free tier. Inside Netlify analytics we are not getting it for free, we must pay for it additionally. And as you can see here, it costs additionally $9 per month. And here you can see the diagram with most important differences between these two websites. So now the main question is what will I choose for myself? And my winner is for sure Netlify. Why is that? Even then we have smaller build time, it doesn't really matter because we can implement payment solutions on the free tier. We can't do that inside Versal at all. This is why it doesn't really make sense for me. But still Versal is completely fine for the projects that you don't want to monetize. So this was Versal versus Netlify, and if you're interested to know how to deploy a Versal application to production in a matter of seconds, make sure to check this video also.